For Jalen to just be out there at 17, you know, treat every race like it's your last one. Every race like it's an Olympic final. My eyes was closed. I couldn't hear nothing. All I just heard was just black. Since I've had a journey of making a qualifying time for the one and two, uh, basically just been prepared for trials. Having the opportunity to at least qualify is an honor. You know what I'm saying? The mentality just you know make the team and then just go out there and show it up all. USA that this year in nail sprinting is probably one of the best that has been in a very long time. It's gonna be a very strong field in Eugene. People like Trevon Brunel, and you have uh, Ronnie Baker, you have uh, Noah Lyles, which is one of the, the favorites you could say going into the trials. I'm not even including a lot of college kids that's been performing. Making the team actually is harder than actually competing in the Olympic Games for the United States. One, two, three, go! Go, go, go! The thing what he's doing is practicing a lot by himself. So what I have to do to keep the intensity high, we do a little bit of overspeed. A lot of her training in the last two weeks is gonna get towards power from the weight room, and speed. That's where our training been based around leading into the trials. The Olympic trials is an event that takes place every four years. It's the trials to make your country and represent your country in the Olympic Games. And the Olympic trials is being held this year in Eugene, Oregon, uh, on the campus of University of Oregon. <laughs> I've never been to Oregon in my whole entire life, so you know, I've never been to Hayward for real either. And I heard a lot of things. I heard, um, you know, it's really beautiful, it's really dope out there. So, you know, just able to put my foot on that type of environment and stage is an you know, honor. So, this one is like 80. 80, 80%, 80 and then the next one, 90, and then the third one, based on how you feel. All right, remember, we already put in the hard work. Yeah, so we ain't gotta like, gotta try to hit six this week. Try. Try. I know there's a little wind. Yeah. Yeah. But two six, not trying. Man, you used to run two seven all I tried. Like, hell, yeah, trying to break two seven. Yeah, like, man. Last night, you know, I got a little nervous just thinking about it. For me and my mental mind, I feel like if I do not get my, my spikes on the tracks, my spikes is not used to or familiar with anything like that, then it's not gonna do what it needs to be doing, in my opinion. So, uh, you know, I had, I had to get someone feeling of the track, I had to get someone feeling of what am I running on, um, how I'm gonna run on it, just basically, just basic stuff that I feel like I need to be doing. The day of um, competition is to try to lock in and try to like know what you can do, know what your training has been doing for you. Is go out here, have fun, and trust in yourself, trust in your coach, trust in everyone that's been a part of the whole process this year. He's a 17-year-old high school senior to be world junior leader of the 100 and number two in the 200 from the IMG Academy in Brighton, Florida, Jayla Slade. We continue back here at Haywood Field with the heats of the men's 100 metres. So we saw Trayvon Brumell win way out in the shadows in lane eight. That's exactly where Jalen Slade is starting, the teenager. Being 17, you know, a lot of people be afraid to do this. I'm just humbled to be able to be at this journey and be where I'm at now. And Jalen Slade in those bright yellow spikes way out wide. As you break down the race and as you re-watch the race, he takes that bad step and everyone goes, 
and then you, you watch him tumble and you watch him fall and immediately my head goes to, okay, what's wrong? But thoughts at the moment are with Jalen Slade. That was such an awkward fall. He's back up though. And I don't know what could have possibly caused it. He's in the outside lane. All of a sudden, in the midst of what felt like a lot of quiet in a long time, you heard clapping. Yeah, he's just 17 years old. Something caused him to pull up and that's why the fall happened. And so at that moment, I said, okay, he's walking himself off the track. That eliminates some things that are going on in his body from my mind and my eval. I talked to Jalen Slade just a second ago underneath the stadium, and he's just dumbfounded. He said all he can tell me is that he just took a bad step, a bad step, and his feet got tangled up, and that was it. Um, he walked off. He's not hurt, just severely disappointed. And the first thing I asked him was, is everything okay? And he said, yes, I just took a bad step. And then Dwight came up, and that's when the sad emotions and the missed opportunity emotions came forward. And that's a tough way for a young kid makes the Olympic trials qualifying standard and gets in here. To have your first race and like that is tough. But he will be back. That kid is an immense talent. It's just a, it's just a, it's just a freak accident, man. That's all you could say. You know what I mean? <sighs> yeah, it's just a freak accident, man. Yeah, it's just a freak accident. And sometimes it even look worse than what it actually even is. Does it look like, like, like you really injured like a, a soft tissue muscle, like, like your hamstring, your quad, something? And just to know it's just, it's, it's, it's a misstep, man. Something just locked on you, I think. Yeah. Just going into it, I was ready. I was just... People said my adrenaline was up, but I felt I felt the same like any other competition. I felt like, you know, the way I came out the blocks, I didn't feel no no explosiveness, no nothing. I felt the same how I always do. So mentally, I'm like I said, I'm just scared. You know what I'm saying? I'm scared for it to happen again. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to happen again. It's scared to run again. It's scared to whatever's gonna happen to us. So you know, we're just getting the the motion of it, getting back into it. You know, jogging a little bit, getting the feeling of it. In talking to Jalen, it's like, when you step on the line and the next time you get in the blocks or the next time you hear a starter say set, you get to kind of think about, okay, the last time I was here, this happened, but I know what it felt like the last time I was successful. 2062, a new high school record. Slade down, oh he my does. goodness, wow. Slade. You know what that feels like. And yes, now you know what. Oh. Oh failing feels like, but you also know what coming back from failure feels like. You want him to be mentally strong enough to be flexible, but I'm going to take that and realize I'm still Jalen Slade and I'm still strong enough to do this. It's day six of U.S. Olympic track and field trials here at Haywood Field in Eugene, Oregon. It's a beautiful day, but it is warm. And then to the outside is a high schooler, just 17 years of age, Jalen Slade from the IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. Coming into track, it's like, you know, I'm fast, but then I, you know, I was capable of being this fast, you know what I'm saying? So started from November, you know, just trusting the process goes to the right, you know what I'm saying? Um, he's a guy who looked into me, who believed in me, basically. And it's just like, you know, um, at the time, you know, we're just coming in just to race, you know, coming in just to see what am I capable of. He sees that, you know, I can do this. He sees that I'm, I'm a little bit different compared to everybody else. Go out and compete at a high level as possible. That's it. You know, there's nothing else you could do at that point. There's no training. There's no second guessing. Nothing gonna change your performance, but yourself just going out there and running as fast as possible. Slate all in blue right there. 
near centre of your screen. Terence Laird on the inside of him. Terence Laird, centre of your screen. All in black. He's going with Jordan Walker. Walker's close. And Jalen Slade has been left behind. It's not where I want it, you know what I'm saying? Me and Dwight, we took a, we took a walk, you know what I'm saying? We, 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 um, we took off what I could have done, you know what I'm saying? Or what I would have done, but you know, I haven't done it, you know what I'm saying? And that's just what I'm taking away from me, you know what I'm saying? Um, just, just know I'm coming back, you know? I'm, I'm coming back here. I don't care what it is, don't, you know, I don't care what it is, world, what it is, the Olympics. I will make that team, and that's, that's just my confidence, you know what I'm saying? I have that confidence just by my coaches, just by my team, just by the support system that I have behind me. I know that I'm capable of, you know, doing what I could do. You know?